what's up youtube so i know it's all been doom and gloom in the subreddit and if you go on the subreddit everywhere you will see people are pretty much up in arms about the changes and a lot of people are upset about the feeling that chris said that loot kind of feels like a lottery and now there's some other thread about how loot problem feedback was confirmed to be an issue by NeverSync and Alpha Testers, but Chris pretty much didn't really respond to it, or GGG didn't really respond to it. And here's another post about people trying to find the legendary Lunaris or Solaris Touch to try to get the lotto. And there's just a bunch of memes everywhere. So, wow, Steam reviews for 3.19 are only 25% positive. Well, here's a positive post. Critique is necessary to stop the hate mongering. And it is important to note that it, there's no reason to be toxic. It's not going to get anything changed. As you see on my most latest Twitter post, I have pretty much already moved on at this point. At this point, loot in 3.19 will not be changed. I believe in 3.20 after all the community feedback that has been given. So the purpose of this video is to pretty much see that the Path of Exile raid class is not in shambles as it might appear in this picture. It's not all doom and gloom as GGG has actually included some changes that have drastically changed the game for the better. And I do think that some of these changes are huge in terms of the long-term enjoyment you may have for the game. And mostly it's about trade. And I do think 3.20 will be a new future for Path of Exile as GGG will take into account. Our feedback and adjust loot to make investing into maps more rewarding. And I was watching the Snap video and I do recommend if you haven't gone to check him out to go check out his video and he did mention a pretty important thing and i do think that it is necessary to kind of think about it real fast is that when ggg actually removed the old quant and rarity scaling from the league mechanics it is because they were trying to make arch nemesis work so when you have a four mod arch nemesis with solaris touch right now it is dropping probably like 50 divines if that solaris touch mob was also an old past league mechanic mob like a beyond monster or in the alva temple or an abyss mod mob or a breach mob then it's potential that you could have dropped hundreds of divines on the ground and i do think that's that probably why ggg decided to remove all of the quant and rarity from past league mechanics and just set it to two to three times now this does not mean that they are malicious in any way this means that they pretty much didn't really test out the changes at all as evidenced by the alpha testers and that is pretty much the main problem and i do think that the removal of beyond is also a huge huge problem as it was pretty much replaced with nothing and all of those factors combined together resulted in 3.19 being pretty bad especially with lake of calandra feeling so unrewarding and also being an out of map mechanic but let's get straight into the top three changes now that we know pretty much what's happening with the current state of the game now the first change is not really that much i mean i did have a lot of trouble coming up with these changes because there weren't really that many great changes in the game to make a top five list or a top 10 list and this change is really really small but the map device now remembers which map crafting option you last used so this does save you a few clicks every single time you do the map and i do know that this kind of seems troll but it is true right so when I go to the thing before, it would always be at the top, and then I would have to go down to select Beyond or something. Well, nowadays, you would probably never select Beyond, so that's not really a problem. But nowadays, when you put it in, it remembers the last option you use, and it is a huge quality of life bonus. Especially if you do any sort of mapping, it will save you a few scroll wheel clicks on your mouse every now and then, and it does add up, especially if you're running like 1,000 plus maps in the league. Now next up we have the unique rework and this is actually a pretty big one and it is always nice to see more uniques that are worth more money. Now this is also a consequence of the nerf to group magic find and pretty much loot in general. And I just wanted to bring up this point because nerfing loot overall in terms of juice maps and in terms of magic finding, in terms of the uniques that you actually find, does make it so that there's more uniques valuable. So this does create the feeling that you can find a unique that's actually going to be worth money and you could actually make something when you find a unique instead of having every single unique in the game being pretty much worthless so you can see right now if we go to the base type of the uniques Aegis Aurora is currently at 14 divines and before you've ever did Crimson Temple 
in terms of magic fighting, you would know that Aegis and Roar, you would sometimes drop two or three of them in a map, and you wouldn't even be surprised. Soul Ascension, I don't really know where that's from. Oh, that's Zizarin's thing. But that's a heist item. And then you have Doriani's prototype, which is five and a half divines. There's a lightning conduit build. Covenant, which got reworked. So now it's also five and a half divines. And that's pretty much because people are using it for chaos builds. And then you have Thunderfist, which is another lightning conduit item. Asinas Mark, which is for both. Pharaoh's Fur, really expensive, but that's actually from Beast, I'm pretty sure. Diala's Malefaction, and that's pretty rare still, so it's somewhere around two divines. And Garukon's Flight, whoa, this is a deck stacking pair of boots, really expensive. And you just see a lot of items. Um, Impulsa, Legacy of Fury, well, these are different. The Goal is still almost one exalt. Seven League Steps is 110 Chaos. So the list just goes on and on. Prism Guardian, 65 Chaos. At this point in the league, Every single one of these uniques would pretty much be worthless. We go look at the accessories. Well, Headhunter doesn't really exist yet. Uh, well, Polaric Devastation. Well, a lot of these are not, I guess there's not really that many unique. Oh, here we go. 50 Chaos for Astramentis. And it seems like Unique Rings, 30 Chaos for Death's Rush. Rizlata's Coil, still 30 Chaos. Aziri's Foible, still 25 Chaos. And this does make it feel a lot better when you find the unique instead of pretty much filtering out every single unique because they are all useless garbage. So let's see about the unique weapons. We have Paradoxica. This can't be right. I guess these must be unveiled. So you, you can see here a big problem is that unique weapons seem to be not really worth that much. And it's all about the unique armors. Void Battery is still kind of healthy. Aerocali's Fang, 2.5 Divine, Soul Taker 40 Chaos. So these ones, uh, there's not that many good unique weapons, and I do think that Cold Iron Point has actually completely disappeared in terms of the best, and that's pretty much because of the nerf to Seismic Trap. Well, Cold Iron Point is only 5 chaos, so some items aren't really that expensive. Now there are a lot of uniques that are at high value, like I said, and it's always nice to be able to find an item on the ground and not have it be completely worthless, because you know every single unique is worthless. So this is pretty much the consequence of the loot nerf and the nerf to group magic find now this thing right here is the biggest feature and i almost feel like this thing makes the league for me personally so right now if you go on the trade website there is a direct message button and let me see oh i have to log in so let me try to log in right here before i can show you so right now you can actually Whisper someone directly into the game before you would actually have to use PoE Lurker in order to do the same thing. So this is pretty much ending a reliance on a third-party program. So before there was no direct whisper button. Right now, when you click direct whisper, you immediately go into the game. So let me just whisper someone random for something. Um, well, I'm not going to press it. But basically, you press this button and you whisper them in game. So I'm going to say never mind. And now something you might notice when you whisper the person in game is that the item is actually highlighted like this. Now, if you wanted to do this in the past, you could pretty much edit the whisper because the item would not be highlighted. So it would be something different like this. Like you see this person right here, you pretty much copy and pasted the message and the power is not actually highlighted like that. So what this means is that people can no longer edit your whisper message. So you can't actually edit this and put something random because you have to actually click from the game and you can't have this Oh wait, this guy wants to buy it for 54. And uh, little does he know I did not want to buy the chest. So I probably have to tell the guy that I'm actually not looking to buy the chest. Now the next thing is this direct message is huge. It ends the reliance on a third-party program and it feels pretty nice to use overall. Now the next thing is huge if you're trying to sell things. Now if you're like me and uh, who's doing five ways or you have a lot of items in the sell tab, say like right here, I have a bunch of timeless jewels. I don't really know which one is which. And when I type in the lethal pride or something, a bunch of stuff pops up. But now, say like this guy wants to buy a gem, right? So enhance, let's say for enhance, say you have a lot of different gems in this tab. Enhance right now, it pops up. It's a very hard to see this little purple icon around, but it highlights it and you can find any item you want in a tab really, really easily before people would have to count. So you see how here it says 116. Before, you would have to be like, oh, this is 24, 23, 22, 21, 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, and do it like that. And that was just maximum no fun. So overall, this is a huge quality of life feature, and I do think that it feels very, very good to use.
and I'm glad that GGG implemented it. So overall, I hope this video has brought you some joy in seeing that the game, they're still trying to actively make it better. They didn't need to make these trade quality of life improvements. And I do think that the Arts Nemesis rewards were pretty much just hastily implemented. They weren't really tested, and that's what led to disaster, while combined with Lake of Calandra being just not that rewarding in general and also out of the map league. Now, in the future, I hope that they do learn from their mistakes because this is a lot of leagues in a row where the new league mechanic has been kind of underwhelming or there's just been some changes that haven't really been tested out that well. But it is crazy how small features for trade quality of life have made the game feel so much better. And it is honestly depressing to me that if we just had a bulk trading auction house where everything you see in the bulk section, so you didn't really need to bother to try to exchange the vines to chaos and have to go through 14 different trades to exchange all your chaos. So right now you can see here I have like 6,000 chaos, right? And every single day I lose money because the price of chaos to divines goes up. So it's like 165. But I just can't bring myself to go through all these trades to trade for divines. And that's pretty much the main problem is that the current trading system sucks. And these trade quality of life improvements have made it a lot better. But I do think that there's still a ways to go. So this is me dreaming of an auction house. But thanks for watching, everyone. I hope you find more mirrors, exalts, and mage bloods and divine orbs than me. And see you next time. Bye. Dead.